Hi boys and girls, welcome to our next knowledge lesson in our unit, The History of Earth. We are going to learn all about minerals today. Let's get started. As always, here are some words we need to listen for as we are reading our story today and listening to it. The first word is characteristics. Characteristics are ways to describe and group things. An example of this is two characteristics of winter are it is the coldest season and snow can fall during it. The next word to listen for is gemstones. Gemstones are stones that are cut and polished to be used in jewelry. An example of this is, we were amazed at the sizes and brilliant colors of the gemstones on display in the museum. The next word to listen for, minerals. Minerals are natural substances found in the earth, the building blocks of rocks. An example, Minerals, such as diamonds and salt, come in many shapes and sizes. And the last word to listen for is traces, or very small amounts. An example, even after cleaning, there were several traces of dust on his glasses. Some things to know before we start our story boys and girls, is that rocks are made of minerals. I'd like you to think of a cookie, any type of cookie. The chocolate chips, nuts, berries, raisin, those are the minerals that make up a rock. The things inside of the cookie, think of them as the minerals. Sometimes minerals are found by themselves in nature, just like a chocolate chip is in the cookie can be eaten by themselves. But mostly minerals are found in rocks and most rocks contain several different minerals at one time. Remember the three important words that Jerry the geologist has told us, heat, pressure, and time. They cause many changes to the earth. And don't forget about where are we when we think about our home, Earth. We've learned about our solar system and that we live on planet Earth. On planet Earth, we live on the continent of North America. We live in the country, the United States of America. We live in the state of Pennsylvania. We live in the city of Erie. And then there's you. You live in your home on your street, in your neighborhood. You are a very important part of our home on planet Earth. Now let's read our story and listen carefully to hear all of the different ways minerals can be described. As a geologist, it is my job to study rocks there are many, many different kinds of rocks out there in the world, and I have collected quite a few rocks during my time as a geologist. Here are some of the rocks and minerals from my collection. I have polished these in a special machine called a rock tumbler, which makes them shiny and really brings out the color. In this pile alone, I can see amethyst, tiger's eye, rose quartz, turquoise, red jasper, onyx. Whoa, sorry, I get carried away sometimes. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. All rocks contain minerals. Sometimes you can find pure minerals unmixed with other minerals, but most rocks contain several different minerals. There are over 3,000 different types of minerals and scientists still discover new ones from time to time. Minerals come in all different shapes and sizes, colors and textures. We use these different characteristics to divide minerals into groups. Some of these mineral groups are quite common, whereas others are very unusual and even difficult to describe. I will tell you about a few of the best known minerals. 
For instance, this is a picture of the mineral quartz. Quartz is the most common mineral in the Earth's crust, not the most common in the whole Earth, just the most common mineral in the crust. This picture shows a type of quartz called milky quartz. Quartz comes in many varieties. There are clear quartz, crystals on the top left. Crystals are small pieces of minerals that have many sides and distinct shapes. Some minerals form into perfect crystals like these, and some don't. It all depends on where and how they are formed within the earth. Crystals can come in all different sizes. Some are as small as a pea, some are the size of your arm, or longer. As for the color variations in different types of quartz, these are largely caused by the addition of very small amounts and various types of metals into the mineral. As for the color variations in different types of quartz, these are largely caused by the addition of very small amounts of various types of metals into the mineral. For instance, the beautiful purple color of amethyst is caused by traces of iron and aluminum metal. Traces are very small amounts. Examples of rare gemstones are some varieties of corundum, a mineral composed mostly of aluminum and oxygen. A gemstone is a stone that is cut and polished to be used in jewelry. Red corundum is known as ruby, and blue corundum is known as sapphire. Rubies and sapphires are among the most beautiful mineral crystals on Earth. Here is another beauty. This is called emerald. Emerald is a variety of the mineral beryl, which also comes in many different colors, including green, blue, yellow, and red. Deep green emerald is my favorite. And here is one of the most famous minerals. Do you know what these beauties are called? These are diamonds. A diamond is the hardest mineral in the whole world. A diamond is hard enough to cut through glass or scratch another mineral. The diamond on the left is a raw diamond, fresh from the earth. The diamond on the right has been cut and polished. The sides of a cut diamond are called facets. You need special equipment and skills to cut and polish diamonds or other gemstones, such as rubies and emeralds. People who cut diamonds look through powerful magnifying glasses as they do their work. This is so they can see all the tiny little facets or sides. Here is one mineral that we use every day. Have you ever heard of salt? Salt or sodium chloride is a common mineral that is found in the oceans and in the earth. Sodium chloride is called table salt when we use it in food and rock salt when we use it to make roads safer during winter storms. Some people put table salt on food to make it taste better. In fact, salt is an extremely important nutrient for people as well as animals. Your body needs salt, not too much, but just enough. Too much salt is bad for you. If you eat too much salt, your body will tell you so because you will feel thirsty. Salt appears in many forms in nature. Rock salt can be found in the form of, of crystals, like the regular shaped crystals pictured on the left in the image. You can't see salt in water because it dissolves, but you'll know it's there if you ever taste ocean water. When salt mixes with water, the salt dissolves in the water or mixes with the water so that no more solid pieces are visible to form salt water. Why do all these different minerals look the way they do? Each has its own story, and it gets pretty complicated. But you can bet that there were three basic things in common, heat, pressure, and time. 
these three factors play a role in the formation of every mineral. An important thing to remember about the rocks you find in nature is that you should leave them there so that other people can also enjoy them. If every person took even one rock, there soon would not be very many rocks left. Without rocks, environments, or natural surroundings change dramatically. If the environment changes, the plants and animals that live there might have a hard time finding food and shelter. Now I've told you a bit about some of my favorite minerals. Take a look at the ground the next time you go outside and you might actually see something interesting. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed Jerry Geologist and the story today on minerals. Have fun completing your activities today and I will see you back here tomorrow as we learn more about our home earth.